Getting straight to the point, without beating around the bush or wasting time, I'm going to share the most important piece of advice from the famous and multi-millionaire author of one of the most well-known financial education books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which has changed the financial mindset of millions of people around the world, including mine, providing me with a more stable financial life, ensuring that I never worry about money again. Now, I will reveal this extraordinary advice without fear that you might lose interest in the video and not stay until the end, simply because what comes after this revelation is much better than the advice itself. Perhaps you're curious now, so just watch and observe what happens to people who ignore this valuable information in practice, as I will lead you on a unique journey of reflection, the most incredible journey of self-discovery that will make you ponder for days, weeks, or months. The most important advice from Robert Kiyosaki is, do not spend more than you earn. Yes. That's right, it sounds too basic, doesn't it? But don't be mistaken, without following this teaching, it's impossible to be truly rich because even if you have a lot of money, you won't have real wealth. You've probably heard someone talk about this before, but you thought it was an unimportant detail that wouldn't make any difference if you adopted it in your life. But the results in practice show the opposite. Without it, it's impossible to build anything in life. This is the first rule of all successful people who manage to stay rich over time and multiply their wealth, thus extraordinarily improving their quality of life. If John D. Rockefeller had spent more money than he earned from selling candies on the street as a child, he would never have managed to save money to lend later with interest, eventually reaching the point of having enough influence to raise more money and establish Standard Oil. And in the end, becoming the richest man in the history of the United States of America. And the best part is that anyone with an income, even the smallest one, can apply Robert Kiyosaki's advice. You don't need to be a very intelligent person with a PhD in finance or have a lot of money. You just need to control yourself, your greatest enemy. I can guarantee that a person with a million will go bankrupt on the same day if they buy a Ferrari for one and a half million, right? How can you make your money multiply if there's no money left to do so? How can money work for you if you're working for it, spending all you earn and getting into debt? Is it a basic necessity or just an ego desire? Living beyond your means, spending what you can and what you can't to show an image to society of something you are not. Regardless of the reason or condition that makes you spend more than you earn, I can affirm that it is possible to reverse this situation even if you earn little. For this, you will need to set aside your ego and be a disciplined person. If you believe that you will become rich one day easily and without making sacrifices, I guarantee that you do not live in the real world, or perhaps you are a very beautiful woman with a legion of followers, simps, who sells photo packages on private platforms. If that is not your case, then prepare for the most incredible journey of your life. Throughout my life, I have witnessed many unfortunate examples of people who did not set aside their ego and momentary desires, being devoured by the despair of a lack of money in their lives. The closest example to me is a cousin of mine who earned three minimum wages and spent four on expensive clothes and partying to impress his circle of friends and women. Today, this cousin lives with his wife and two daughters in two rooms in the same house as his mother. He even had to ask his mother to finance a motorcycle for him because his name is buried in debt. Otherwise, he would not be able to work. Here is the example. Whether you are a man or a woman, do not think about starting a family and having children without being able to afford it, because I believe you wouldn't want a child to come into the world without the basic conditions to live. Many people do things impulsively. This is why many children are born without planning, and it is an effective way to increase poverty. If you ask most people if they plan to have children at that moment, I guarantee that most, if they are honest, will say they did not want that at that moment. Do not fall for the story of supporting your children with government aid. Besides being very little, it still harms the country's economy, forcing productive people who generate income and pay their taxes to allocate their resources in a mandatory and state-mandated way to a problem that was not caused by them. Not to mention the increase in taxes and money printing that generates the much-cursed inflation, further increasing the country's poverty due to the devaluation of the currency and people's purchasing power. 
Populist governments love this kind of chaos, as it is a way for them to stay in power while the population suffers under the illusion of being helped. But the truth is completely the opposite. Be patient and save the dream of building a family for when you have enough money not to worry about your children's expenses until they reach maturity. Now, if by any chance you want to have a child just to feel loved or useful in the world, I suggest you seek a psychologist, as this may be an unresolved emotional problem, and even if you have 30 children, this problem will not be solved. The primitive need that people have to be accepted in a particular community, bubble, circle, or social network, can lead many individuals to take destructive actions, even though they might think it's the best thing ever. I cite the example of a poor friend of mine who spent more than 90% of his salary buying a pair of Nike Jordan sneakers. I confess that until he told me he made this purchase, I didn't even know Michael Jordan had an exclusive line of sneakers with Nike, despite being over 35 years old. Well, the fact is that he bought these sneakers to get likes and compliments from the women he was interested in on social media, specifically on Instagram, that social network where poor people post photos pretending to be rich and living on vacation 365 days a year. The first thing he did with the sneakers was not to wear them, but to take photos of them, and then, with the sneakers on his feet, take more photos and post them online. I know this because he told me himself, especially since I don't have Instagram, and he kept mentioning that the girls commented, liked, and praised his photos, making him look like a rich young man. After he told me all this, I said I didn't know these sneakers existed, and even though I had the money to buy 30 pairs like his right then, I wouldn't do it because I know how hard it was to earn that amount. Besides living alone and having all the expenses that an independent person has, while he, at 24, was living with his mother in a house rented by her, which is not a demerit, but I would do it differently. I would prefer to make better use of that money by investing in my qualifications or putting it into some fixed income fund or saving up to start a business in the future. That way, at some point in life, I would have enough money to buy a house so my mother wouldn't have to pay rent anymore and would have the peace of mind along with the comfort of living worry-free in her own home. That would be the least I could do for both her and myself. After he realized I disapproved of this purchase, he tried to do some mental gymnastics by saying it's good to treat yourself this way because he deserved it for having a job. By this logic, if all working people were to make this kind of treat, they would starve the next day if they lost their jobs. The funniest and most impressive thing about all this is that he had borrowed my video game for six months and didn't care to pay even 5% of the sneaker's value to repair his broken video game. I prefer not to judge this case and leave it to you to form your own opinion. If you paid attention to the underlying messages in these two examples of people close to me who misused money, you could see that I dropped many tips on how to avoid spending more than you earn. However, I ask you to keep watching, because the best is yet to come. I believe everyone here will agree with having an emergency fund. Well, my friend, who is over 40 years old with a wife and two young daughters, works as a self-employed app driver. He starts at 7 in the morning, then takes a lunch break and finishes work at 6 in the evening. The fact is, he manages to earn a good amount of money, even working relatively few hours, as he does not work on weekends or holidays. Every self-employed person has to always be one step ahead of unforeseen events that can happen in their field. In his case, it could be car breakdowns, fines, and health issues that prevent him from working and generating income. The best way not to be caught off guard is to have a generous emergency fund saved up, which is not the case with my friend, because even with high expenses as a family man, he doesn't give up his beer on weekends and doesn't try to work a little more to build this reserve. The height of this disregard for unforeseen events peaked when he bought a PlayStation 5, which represented all the profit from his month's work, even though he sold his PlayStation 4 to make the purchase easier. If there's one thing in life I can say is relentless, and every day we are subject to is the unforeseen, and the unforeseen did not spare my friend with the birth of his second daughter and the breakdown of the engine of his only car that he used for work. The car repair cost all his monthly profit, which left him three weeks without work, and he only managed to repair it because his father-in-law lent him the money. Having an unbalanced financial life 
is not only detrimental to the individual, but also to all the people close to him who feel bad about being in this situation. You could see that these three people I used as examples are economically active people who do not live below the poverty line. This is the profile of the majority of people. The extremely poor are a tiny minority. All people with health and the willingness to work are part of the majority and are fully capable of having more financially stable lives. So why doesn't this happen? The answer is as follows. Throughout life, we realize that the safest and most important conduct that provides a better outcome is not doing something instead of doing something. For example, not buying expensive clothes, not buying things of little utility, not showing off on social media, not taking out loans, not caring about the opinion of others, not spending your money on expensive weekend parties, not going out alone late at night in dangerous places, not entering toxic relationships, not going to college that doesn't suit you, not spending most of your free time playing video games, not having children without the means, not making high interest debts, not speaking truths that go against common sense in public, not driving without wearing a seatbelt, not having friends who only want to be with you in good times, not making investments without having full conviction and among other thousands of stupid things that people do on impulse and because they cannot resist momentary desires because they are prisoners of their own ego. I could spend another hour here talking about all the things people do that end up severely harming their lives, but this served to give an idea that what harms people the most are the things they do with their poor choices, sometimes causing even irreversible damage. In other words, often doing nothing is more important than doing something. Most people tend to act on impulse, control these impulses by taking a deep breath and just staying still. By doing this, you can significantly reduce the number of bad things that can happen to you. Your mindset will be expanded to the fullest now, because even though you are fully convinced that it is impossible to save money because you earn too little, I will prove otherwise. I will open your mind by giving useful and easily applicable tips that can be followed in your daily life so that you can start being the owner of your own life instead of money or the lack of it owning you. If you continue with the belief that it's not possible, I earn too little, that's why nothing is left. The most important information in this video will go in one ear and out the other. Therefore, remain open to a new world shaped by logic and facts and you will see that it is possible, breaking once and for all this slave belief that hinders everyone from growing. My first tip is for you to create a detailed budget. If you don't know what a budget is, it's simply writing down everything you spend and comparing it with all the money you earn. Just note your expenses and income in a notepad, notebook, phone, or wherever you prefer. This helps identify where you can cut unnecessary expenses and prioritize what is essential. The second step is to have self-control by avoiding impulse purchases. Before buying something, especially expensive items, think if it is really necessary. Wait a few days to assess if it's a purchase you really need to make or if you can save the money for something more important. If you have trouble following this tip, I strongly advise you to look for Stoicism videos right here on the platform. This ancient philosophy is very effective in identifying what is under our control and what is not, which helps a lot in knowing yourself. The next tip is the most important for those who earn very little because it involves searching for discounts and promotions. Before buying anything, look for coupons, discounts or promotions. This way, you save a lot on everyday items like food, clothing and household products. This tip can be expanded when you opt to buy similar products from cheaper brands such as cleaning products or food because these companies usually have the same supplier, changing only the labels and a slight difference in quality. You will see how much you can save by doing this. It will seem like magic. Just adopt this idea every time you shop for basic necessities. Now that you understand the basic concept of saving money, it is important to follow this tip. Consider additional sources of income. If possible, look for ways to generate extra income, such as freelancing, selling items you no longer use, offering specific skills like tutoring, or looking for temporary job opportunities. You can work at night festivals that often happen on weekends, like electronic music parties, as an attendant, cashier, security guard, or many other roles. In the end, 
there are no limits for those who really want to make extra money. However, what I consider more important than this strategy is Warren Buffett's advice. Invest in yourself to position yourself to earn more money in less time, so you can eventually have enough money to start a successful business or live off investments. As Buffett himself said, investing in yourself pays the best dividends. You have just received enough information to believe that it is possible to go from zero to achieving a more comfortable financial life with determination. Remember, the most important thing is not doing rather than doing. When you are about to make a bad choice, your survival instinct will signal this to your consciousness. At this moment, do nothing, stay still because destroying a sandcastle is faster than building one. Just one touch and everything collapses. This is how bad life choices can destroy or delay our plans for years. Now I ask for your permission to request that you leave a like and comment on this video. Without your help, this video is not recommended by YouTube, and because of this, very few people get to know this video exists. I count on you and see you next time.